let's talk about memoization. Memoization is this technique in programming which consists of storing a result of a function for later usage. So it's like a memorization, but for functions. To distinguish it from the regular use of the word memorization, we call it memoization. Memoization is remembering results for functions. And why would you do that? You would do that because you would like to optimize your program. Your computation may be long. And instead of doing it again and again, you could just do it once and then store somewhere this result when the same invocation happens in your program. Instead of doing this computation again, you would just go to the place where you stored this result and use it instead, which would be much quicker because it would be already computed and just stored uh, somewhere. So it works like a cache. It's a cache for function for the function results, we could say. We can invoke functions and instead of discarding this result, we can store it somewhere, hoping that this the same invocation will happen in the future. And when we say the same invocation, it means that the arguments that are passed to this function must be the same, right? Because if they were different, it would be a different result. Let's see an example. So we have this sum function here, which just takes two arguments and it adds them. So let's see if it works. So I will just print it and let's add two and seven. So two and seven is nine. So if I, if I repeat that, I will execute invoke this function once again. And it means that it will go here and do the computation, the addition of those arguments again. But what we could do, we, we could introduce a cache. So it could be a simple object. And we could just say that we, if you see 2 and 7, return 9 instead of going to the function. In this case, if we invoke this function again, this function would have to know that instead of going to compute it here, it should go here to the cache and uh, just check the arguments if they match. If it's 2 and 7, then return 9. So for every entry that exists in this cache, the function would avoid compute computing that. And it would just return right away, immediately, the result. So normally you wouldn't do it by hand. You wouldn't add this cache on your own as we did here. It's just an example. It is much better to use an existing solution. We will talk about the existing so solution in a moment. But before we go any further, let's talk about complexity. Because this is a trade-off. We see a function which is long, which takes a longer time to execute, and we want to reduce that time. And when a function takes longer time, we say it's computationally expensive. If a function is computationally expensive, we may want to reduce that, and we need to trade something. We need to increase the memory usage in this case, because instead of just doing the computation, we need some place in, me in the memory, and we need to store the arguments for which the result will be remembered, memorized, or memoized. So this is the additional space we need. And if there are many arguments, many function signatures, that will be invoked, many different combinations of arguments that will be invoked. If there are many different combinations of arguments that can be invoked in your program, it means that this space can grow. You need to take a decision if you want to optimize this function for speed, if you want to make it shorter. For certain results, you may store them in memory, but in that case, you need, you need to have this memory. But usually this is not a problem because Today, we have a lot of memory to our disposal, much more than in the past. Usually, memoization technique is a good technique to apply for functions which take some time, some substantial time to execute. That's pretty much it. If you want to, if you have a function, you want to remember the results, you use memoization. And this technique is related somehow to another technique or um, algorithm, rather, called dynamic programming. There is a certain group or set, certain set of problems that you use this way where you remember some invocations. In the case of dynamic programming, you may use memoization, 
but you may also use some other techniques like tabulation to remember certain things in order to in order to construct the final result. So this makes sense if those computations repeat in your execution and then you can combine them and get the final result. Now the most important thing in this video. The memoization technique only makes sense for functions which are referentially transparent. This means that this optimization technique should be applied to pure functions, as we learned from other videos. So we talked about functions, then we talked about referential transparency, then about pure functions, and now memoization is one of the techniques that makes sense only for such functions, for pure functions. So you can see that being able to distinguish between pure and unpure functions can help you later on if you decide to, if you need to, optimize those functions at some point to use this particular technique and other technique, uh, techniques as well. So in the first episode I told you about functions as unit of computations. Then we talked about arithmetical operations and that we can think about functions as rewriting certain things, like reducing them. For example, addition can be reduced to the result and then multiplication and if the formula is long we can piece by piece reduce it to a single value in the end. And here if you think about this it's kind of similar because we have a function which does some computation but we trade space for time. If a function is long we decide to cache its result because we know that for the same arguments it will always return the same result because it's referentially transparent which means it's a pure function so then we can just associate given arguments with given result and later on in our program if we see the same invocation of this function we can just skip the computation or skip the rewriting and we can go to the cache and use the result straight away so it's important to remember that memoization makes sense only for pure functions, only for functions which are referentially transparent. Finally, about implementation, you can do it by hand, but it's tricky because for simple functions such as addition, you'll probably be able to do memoization on your own, but you shouldn't do it. You, you should rather use an existing function. And let's quickly take a look at some of the uh, functions we may use. So I provided some examples on my website. So if you go to my website to programming JavaScript, JavaScript libraries, there is memoization section. And I highly recommend this Ramda library, which is a functional library for JavaScript. So it's much more than memoization. But if you want something smaller or faster, because Ramda is not the fastest and not the smallest one, but it doesn't really matter because this is not something you should be worried about. But if you need something more in that vein, something smaller, something faster, you can check, for example, Nano Memoize. And if we take a look at one of those libraries, the usage is pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the API. So again, we have the, the function here. We invoke the another function on our function, and then we get as a result our function, but with the ability to memorize the results. So then when we call it for some arguments, if it's called again for the same arguments, it will take it from the cache, which is hidden from you and you don't have to worry about that. There we have it, another fancy concept, which is very, very simple and very useful at the same time. That's all for today. See you next time.